Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. Today's episode is a topic that's actually very close to the heart of Slick and myself, and that is mechanical keyboards. We're going to talk about the options that you have available and the advantages they have over cheap keyboards that use membrane keys and poor quality construction, and no offense to the one who made this one, but everything on the table in front of me is way better. <laughs> Why do enthusiasts choose mechanical keyboards? Membrane keyboards are so cheap, if it wears out, you can just replace it. Okay, so yeah, they last longer, that's good. They can last years, even decades longer than membrane keyboards. However, for those years and decades, you can either be really comfortable and type really fast, or you can not. Mechanical keyboards are more comfortable to use. It's not open for debate, it is fact. Also, if I put a mechanical com keyboard in front of any touch typist, I guarantee they will be faster within a couple of hours, even if it's not the ideal layout for them. Now, there are an entirely, hugely, widely range of available keyboards, so you can find the one that's just right for you. So basically, in summary, they're more comfortable, they last longer, you'll type faster, and you get to enjoy that satisfying click or not enjoy the satisfying click, whichever you prefer. Let's start with introducing some of the variety of what we have here today. So let's go by brand. We have the Corsair a K60 and the K90. We've got the DAS keyboard uh, professional as well as ultimate. And we've got one in a clicky version, one in a non-clicky version. We have four keyboards from Philco, which are actually as different from each other as they are from any of the other keyboards here from any other manufacturer, with the exception being that they are all phenomenally well built. We've got the Mionix Zybel 60. We've also got the Levitron Mech 5 from ASIO, the SteelSeries 7G, and finally we've got Slick's keyboard, which as you can see has like leprosy or something, so it's uh, Got a bunch of different keycaps and stuff on it. I don't know what he's doing. Something all these keyboards have in common is they're all using key switches that look pretty much like this for every single key. This is a Cherry MX Black, and all of these keyboards, in fact, most consumer keyboards are using key switches from Cherry and from their MX line. There are four main key switches, and they are all differentiated in terms of their color, but they have very different characteristics. So let's start with Cherry MX Blues. Blue key switches are very tactile. That is, you have a very strong feeling of when the switch is actually actuating, which is when it's registering your keystroke. It also has a very, well, satisfying clicky keyboard sound that most people associate with mechanical keyboards, although not all mechanical keyboards are loud like that. Cherry MX Blues are generally considered to be the best for very fast typists. Brown key switches have the tactile feeling of a blue key switch, but without the clicky sound. So they are less obnoxious to coworkers nearby or family members that you're gonna keep up when you're typing late into the night. A pretty good compromise between a blue and something like a black. Black key switches have a very smooth travel. So you can't really feel the actuation point, but if you're a very heavy handed typer and you're gonna press them all the way down to the back plane of the keyboard every time anyway, Way, it probably won't make that much of a difference to you. They are non-clicky and they don't make as much noise. And the only real difference between blacks and reds is that blacks require a little bit more force to press down and reds require a little bit less. Generally speaking, these more linear keys have been considered to be a more natural transition from membrane keyboards, especially for gamers. And it comes down to how hard you want to press, whether you want to go with the blacks or the reds. Beyond switches, all of these keyboards are quite different from each other. So let's start with switches just so that we can get our legs under us, so to speak. Both of Corsair's keyboards, the K60 and the K90, use red key switches. We also have one from Philco that uses red key switches, although they have so many different SKUs available, you can get almost every configuration with any kind of switch anyway. When it comes to blue key switches, we've actually got a Philco with blue key switches. The DAS keyboard clicky version uses blue key switches. Um, Slick's Ducky also uses blue key switches, and that's all we've got for blue key, key clicky, blue clicky keyboards. When we get to black switches, I actually notice a very big difference between some black keyboards and other black keyboards. It comes down to the way it's implemented. We have one black Philco. We also have three more black keyboards over here, including a SteelSeries 7G, a Levitron Mech 5 as well as the Mionix Zybel 60. For brown key switches, we've actually only got a couple. We've got the DAS keyboard silent, we've also got a Philco keyboard, and that's pretty much it for browns.
If you want convenience features like built-in hubs or built-in audio pass-throughs, then you're going to be limiting your options a little bit. Corsair's keyboards both have a single USB port pass-through. The DAS keyboards both have a two-port USB 2.0 hub. And then the other ones that include USB hubs are the Mionic Zybel 60, which has a two-port hub, the ASIO Mech 5, which has a two-port hub, and the SteelSeries 7G, which also has a two-port hub. There are only two keyboards here that include audio pass-throughs, which allow you to plug your keyboard in all as one big giant cable into the back of your PC and then you can plug your headphones and microphone directly into the back of your keyboard as well as something like a USB key and a mouse and those are the SteelSeries 7G as well as the Mionix Zybel 60. Personally, I'm a huge fan of backlit keyboards. They allow you to see what you're doing more easily in the dark, and they also look really cool. The only ones we have here today are the K90 and the Zybel 60 from Corsair and Mionix. Both of these are using individual LED backlights on every switch, which differentiates them from most membrane keyboards, which light up zones of the keyboard, and it's not as even. And one other thing to note about any individually backlit keyboard is that it is going to be using a laser-etched key for sure. What that means is that there is absolutely no way that the printing on the top will ever wear out because it passes all the way through the plastic in order for light to pass through it. Another thing that lots of people like is having media shortcuts on their keyboards. Both of the Corsair keyboards include full dedicated media key sections up at the top right of the keyboard. We also have one Philco that includes media keys with a function shortcut. The Mionix Zybel 60 also includes media keys on the F keys as a function shortcut and the Steel Series 7G includes that functionality as well. The rest of the ones here, except for the Ducky, Okay, Slick's giving me that look. Actually don't have any media shortcuts, although the Mech 5 does have a volume wheel. There's a wide variety of different layouts available as well. What you guys might have noticed is some of these keyboards actually don't even have number pads. So let's start with the actual key sizes themselves. The Steel Series 7G is the only one that really deviates out of what we've got here from what I would consider to be more standard size keys. It has a short backspace, which I personally can't really use because of my small hands, but might not bother a lot of people. The rest of the ones here have pretty standard layouts. However, you can see Philco has two keyboards here which are called 10 keyless that are actually fully missing the number pad and the Mech 5 actually does have a number pad but you can see I've got it on the wrong side right now. You can take this thing right off by detaching the switches and put it onto the other side of the keyboard should you see fit and then you can even take a USB cable and run it completely separately also should you see fit. Uh, one other layout change that exists on all, some of the keyboards is the presence of programmable keys. The Mech 5 includes programmable keys along the side here as well as a rail that slides along the top. You can add more programmable keys above your F keys. And the Corsair K90 also includes 18 programmable keys off to the left. However, it should be noted that the K90 and the K60 both have some non-mechanical keys on them. The F rows, the delete, sort of um, cluster here, as well as the programmable G keys on these keyboards are using membrane key switches, which Corsair believes the difference in tactile feel is important for knowing what you're pressing. Um, however, I would have preferred to see mechanical key switches across the board, get it, across the board, on these keyboards. Keycaps make a big difference to the keyboarding experience and there's a wide variety of them available. Let's start with the most common, which is top printed keycaps. They have printing, either you know, stickers or ink or whatever else the case may be, right on the top of the key, which is the least durable kind of printing, but it is also the least expensive to do. The most durable kind is actually the laser etched ones. Out of everything we have here, it will pretty much never wear out because the printing goes right through the key, which is what allows light to pass through it. Now, if you wanna be a little bit of an elitist, you can get yourself a Metadot Ultimate Keyboard, which is available in a clicky or a non-clicky version, either blue or brown switches. This has no printing on it whatsoever, which I personally think is really, really cool. Now, Philco has a unique solution where they are saving the cost to the end user of uh, doing a more expensive printing method. So they're just doing a simple, you know, ink printing method. However, they're printing it on the front of the key, which means it can never wear out because you will never be touching it there. There are also some unique keys that you're going to find sort of scattered around here. For example, Corsair with their K60 includes some rubberized keys that also have a bit of a contoured shape to them that allow you to more easily feel for them in the middle of a firefight and make sure that your hand is positioned in the right place. 
Uh, Philco also includes some cool green keys to replace your WASDs should you see fit. That is a fairly stylish thing that you see on a fair number of keyboards. Last but not least, um, there is Slick's keyboard. So his ducky is like, comes with the normal WASDs and then it has its like leprosy aftermarket thing going on over there. So I don't know what to say about that. Mechanical keyboards are all more comfortable, but a wrist rest can make a big difference as well. The K60 comes with a very unique wrist rest that is optimized for gaming. So it sits right under your left wrist and holds it there for like more, more gamingness. Uh, the K90, which is more of their MMO optimized keyboard, assumes that besides playing MMOs, you will also type and comes with a full size wrist rest along with the Mionix Zybel 60, which also comes with one. Both of those are detachable and the Mech 5's wrist rest is not detachable. The big winner when it comes to wrist rest is the Steel Series 7G. I apologize for not having it here in the video right now, but it's freaking awesome and it's amazing. It's huge, it looks kind of stupid, and it takes up a lot of space on your desk, but it is by far the most comfortable keyboard in terms of if you're lazy about your wrists and you let them fall down, it will hold them up for you. It's never as simple as declaring a winner when it comes to something like peripherals. I'll tell you guys this right up front. That Slick's keyboard, I used the Mionix Zybel 60. We're both very happy with our keyboards and neither of us are really considering switching to any of these other ones available. Which doesn't mean that there aren't other intriguing options here. The DAS Keyboard Ultimate has kind of caught my eye because I'm one of those guys who's kind of a, you know, a bit of an elitist. If someone sits down at my computer and can't even use it at all, I find that, you know, kind of satisfying. It's like, haha, I know the, yeah, the layout of a keyboard completely by heart and you don't, haha. So uh, if you're into that, then that's cool. If you want to rest on a wrist rest, like my wife, for example, she will not switch from her 7G no matter what else I put in front of her. She loves the wrist rest. That's actually hers. I stole it. She can't type tonight. So, so there you go. I'm going to have to take that home. If you want programmable keys, well then you're looking at something like a Mech 5 or a K90. So this is the point I'm trying to make guys. Try things, figure out what works for you in terms of keycaps, figure out what works for you in terms of layout. It's going to be 100% personal. Maybe some people like a camo layout on their keyboard, maybe some people don't. But the point is that if you are end up with one of these, you're going to be stuck with it for a long time, so make sure you make an educated choice. Has this episode of NCIX Tech Tips given you guys the, the push you need to make the jump and go for a mechanical keyboard, I'd love for you guys to use the thumbs up and the thumbs down on the video as a bit of a polling system. If you own a mechanical keyboard or after watching this video you are planning to get a mechanical keyboard in the future at some point, give it a thumbs up. If you have no desire for a mechanical keyboard and you think the whole idea of spending a hundred plus dollars on a keyboard is kind of silly, go ahead and give it a thumbs down. I want to see what you guys think. Don't forget to subscribe to NCIX Tech Tips.